What have you been drinking this summer? I know what you should have been drinking this summer. I'm going to tell you what I've been drinking and when is a good time to serve up that really good bottle of wine. All that coming up on this episode of The Average Wine Enthusiast. Hi there, everybody. My name is Mike LaPlante, and I'm the average wine enthusiast. What can I say except rosé, rosé, rosé all day? <laughs> this uh, past summer, I have been in a very defined period of my wine journey. And what is that definition? It can be defined by rosé. Here, let me pour a little bit of rosé right now because my whistle needs wetting. Uh, what am I pouring here? This is some rosé from Cassaba uh, winery out in the uh, Niagara region. Not too bad for rosé coming out of uh, the Niagara region. This was made with Cabernet Franc, I believe this rosé was. Um, but like I was saying, this summer has really defined this section of my journey with rosé. Uh, if you remember at the beginning of summer, sometime in May, I believe I had just got back from France and we uh, experienced some rosé there that really turned me on to it. I thought this was this is amazing. Here's a, a whole class of wine that is extremely ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And I really didn't understand it or appreciate it for what it was. So this summer, there has probably been a bottle of rosé in my fridge every single day. Uh, do I drink it every single day? No. Do I drink it a lot? Yes, I do. Why? Because it's summertime and you stick it in the fridge. Stuff in the fridge tastes really good when it's hot in the summertime. Um, I've had mostly rosé from France. Uh, I've had some uh, Cote Roti, uh, Cote de Rhone, uh, Cote de Provence, uh, some rosé from Nîmes. And another one, Tavel, is another region where I've had rosé from. I'm probably missing a couple as well, but they have all been really good. I'm very um, satisfied with the fact that every single wine, every single rosé that I've had from France has been really good. It, it, every one of them has impressed me on some level. Have I been drinking other rosés? You know it. I've had uh, rosés from California, from Spain, and of course some rosés from Canada. I have to admit, not every one of those turned me on. They uh, left me wanting or just, uh, should I be comparing them with all the ones that I'm drinking from France? Maybe, maybe not, but uh, I try to appreciate each wine, whether it's a rosé or whatever it is, for what it is in terms of uh, flavor, body, and aromas, and all that. I try to take everything into account. And uh, I have to admit that, well, for one thing, rosés from California are not very abundant in these parts. Let's just put it that way. It, they're just not easy to get a hold of at all, actually. Uh, how much rosé comes out of California, I'm not sure. But I tried a couple, and they weren't all that hot. Left me thinking that they, I would never buy them again. Uh, I'm sure there's some good rosé out there. I'm positive of it. Um, rosé from Spain as well, which uh, I would assume is made from Tempranillo grapes, uh, also just didn't have that same uh, flavor profile I may have been looking for in a rosé, maybe lacked a little body. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I... I never took any tasting notes, even though I'm considering taking tasting notes. Uh, on a more regular basis. You know, you find yourself at wineries or wherever and uh, there's some wines that you really don't want to forget what you liked about them or even more importantly, maybe what you didn't like about them. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, I've been trying other rosés. The ones from France are pretty good. And this one here from Cassaba is not too bad either. We just were there this past weekend. When I say there, I mean at the Cassaba Winery and uh, we were on a trip in that neck of the woods so we drove through there to go to uh, Stony Ridge Winery to pick up some more bottles of Fully Completely. What is Fully Completely? 
Uh, it is a wine, it's a blend that is in partnership with the band Tragically Hip. And I try to drink uh, at least uh, one bottle um, on August 20th every year. What is August 20th? That's the day that they played in their hometown of Kingston, Ontario. And they, uh, of course, Gordy, Gord Downey was diagnosed with cancer. Courageous tour ended in Kingston. It was broadcast nationally. Uh, and so to me, that's na national tragically hip day. To me, that's when I really remember uh, us coming together as a nation to really appreciate uh, something that we really have. Uh, and the Stony Ridge Winery is in partnership still with Tragically Hip and they're still producing uh, fully completely. So I had one this year on August 20th, a few weeks back, and it was a 2013 and it was closed with a cork and it was delicious. I've had many of these bottles of Fully Completely, especially when they first came out, bought a few bottles. And uh, I have to admit, they all had a similar uh, quality to them that I associated with a lot of the wines coming out of the Niagara region. Why is that? I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't got into that on any show yet, but I probably will. But this 2013, which would make it a six-year-old wine, was delicious, I have to admit, the best fully completely that I've had. Uh, if you're in the province of Ontario, you can probably easily uh, get some fully completely just by ordering it from your LCBO, I think. I'm not sure how many bottles of uh, fully completely that Stony Ridge is releasing to the LCBO, but you should be able to get to your hands on some. And I'm sure there's wine brokers in the States and all throughout the world where you can probably pick up a bottle of, uh, of that wine. It's 25 Canadian dollars at the winery. Which is, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, I wanted to fill my cellar some more with, with newer vintages for maybe six years from now. Uh, I have to admit that the vintage there is, um, that I was able to get was 2017, I believe. And uh, I want to say that the last time I was there, I was only able to get the year before. So let's say I was there in 2017, I was only able to get 2016s. Whereas now here it is 2019, and I was able to get 2017. So that's it. yeah, that's exactly how that went down. So uh, what I know is that it tastes better when it gets older. Imagine that. That's what wine tends to do. Uh, having said that, every fully completely after 2015 is closed with a screw top. Why is that? I'm not sure. I asked the guy behind the counter who I've seen at Stony Ridge Winery before. And he gave me a lame-ass excuse why they did that. I suspect cost had something to do with it. Not positive, but, um, you know, different wineries and different winemakers have their reasons for closing their wines the way they do. Um, we also got some of their Cabernet Sauvignon. They're selling 2016s of uh, the uh, Cassaba. Sorry, I went from Stony Ridge to to back to cassava. So yes, I'm drinking some cassava rosé. I also bought some of their Syrah, which I'm drinking right now, and a bottle of their Cabernet Sauvignon. Very reminiscent of old world wine. Medium body, um, but plenty of complexity, and I suspect that these will get better with time. Uh, I bought a couple bottles of the Syrah, so I'm going to leave that down in my cellar, but I probably might open this Cabernet Sauvignon next year, who knows when, uh, and we'll see if that gets any better with time. Do they want to say anything else about uh, Rosé? I kind of got sidetracked with uh, going to Niagara region there. Um, I did try a Rosé from New Zealand that I found at the LCBO here in Windsor, I guess, is where it was at, and uh, it's called Black Cottage. And I have to admit, that was also a good non-French rosé. So, yeah, there was this guy here. You know, I, don't, I can't say that any of them stuck out other than this Black Cottage and this cassava. It's very drinkable, I have to admit. Um, here, let me, let me have another fine sip of this cassava rosé. It's called Rebecca Rosé. I'm sure there's a story behind that. So, what else have I been drinking? Uh, so, there, there's the Fully Completely, which I just told you about. There's the Mourchon um, that I had. Uh, we had a party at the guy who I went to France with, Gord, and he's also a winemaker himself. 
and we stopped at this one winery called Morchon. It was recommended to us when we were there in France. And it was very good. And I happened to find a bottle of that in Quebec at the SAC. When I went to vacation in Quebec, we went and visited a SAC and I found some Morchon there. So that was the bottle I took over to his place. And that also, extremely complex. Probably would do good with maybe a couple more years of aging. I want to say it was a 2013, but I th still think uh, it, it's a very cellarable wine. And I do have a couple more bottles of Mouchon in my cellar. And um, But it was a medium body, very complex, yummy wine. And also, I got turned on to um, a wine called Canadian Gothic by, um, what is the name of the winery? I want to say it's Pilateri, uh, but I want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Pilateri, that's it. And it's called Canadian Gothic, and I got turned on to it from someone who's not really into wine, but they were given a bottle of this for their wedding, and he was nice enough to open it up. Our friend Patrick, who got married to my wife's best friend, Rose, and uh, they he was nice enough to open this bottle for me. It was a 20... 14 2014 Canadian Gothic and I was very pleasantly surprised I wanted to finish the bottle but he just cracked it open so we could have a couple sips before we went out somewhere else so fortunately for him he was able to finish it hopefully you did finish that bottle Patrick um, so we went to the Niagara region like I said but we were also in the Toronto area went to an LCBO and I saw a couple bottles of this so I picked them up, and I'm just going to throw them downstairs. I think they're 2017. Oh, one's a 2016, one's a 2017. My wife's good at that. She goes and digs in the corners. And oftentimes, there's a mix of vintages. Uh, they'll put the... Usually, they'll put the older vintage up front, but sometimes it gets mixed up in the back, or maybe they get put there on purpose. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, we got some more Canadian Gothic. If you see it around, I would highly recommend picking up a bottle and putting it somewhere for a year or two. So another topic that I wanted to touch on was, uh, or it's a question that I get uh, relatively often, is someone will buy a really good bottle of wine, they'll stick it away for a period of time, and then they'll have an occasion to open it, uh, whether you know it's an anniversary or something, and they'll have guests over, and they want to serve the wine with the dinner they're having however people get to your house before dinner they don't just come in the house and they start eating so what do you open before the good bottle of wine it's hard because you don't want to give them something too crazy and really attack your palate and then they won't even, won't even notice that you have a half decent bottle of wine uh, to serve with your dinner what you do is get something that is medium bodied. I would recommend uh, old world wine of some sort, but don't uh, cheap out. Um, get something good. Don't get something, don't, you don't want to open up the cheap stuff first. You want to open that up last. So you want to get a pretty decent bottle of wine, sit down to dinner. Supposedly, you have a bottle decanted for a couple hours uh, before you uh, serve it at your dinner. And then you serve it and enjoy that wine with that meal that you're going to have. And then when that runs out, that's when you pull out the, the cheaper stuff. Please don't drink cheap wine. Friends don't let friends <laughs> drink cheap wine. And neither does the average wine enthusiast. Uh, the average wine enthusiast doesn't allow viewers to drink cheap wine. That's my new motto. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to bring up? Uh, I guess not. Um, next show will probably be maybe a little more educational. We'll dive into some very specific topic. And uh, we'll take it from there. And now that summer is done, I'll probably be doing a few more of these shows. Summertime is a busy time for me. A busy drink and rosé, that is. And uh, I probably will end up doing less shows next summer as well, if I'm still doing this gig. And uh, hopefully I'll see it very soon for another episode of The Average Wine Enthusiast. 
Until that time, I would like you to please recommend the show to friends who are digging wine and they may dig this show as well. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'd really appreciate it. Speaking of appreciation, I'd like to uh, give my appreciation to the big organ trio who let me use their music uh, at the beginning and end of the show. I guess that's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, folks, I'm Mike LaPlante, and I'm the Average Wine Enthusiast. Salute! Wow.